So, expression, hip hop. Now, one of the hardest things that happens in hip hop is picking up a mic, period. Yes. Or touching a board. Correct. Then you play with hip hop. I used to rhyme. Not great, never was great, I'll never say that. But there comes a time when you get so used to it, you start to find your voice. Right. How did you find your voice and what is it? Oh man, that, that, those are great questions. Um, I would just say repetition, you know what I'm saying? Cause I've, I wouldn't necessarily say I've mentored a lot of MCs, but I mean, I've definitely done some work with younger MCs and producers and stuff like that. And for me, it's just always been about reps because I mean, <laughs> when you're when you're coming up with something again you see a lot of everything if you're paying attention of course or even if you're focused on one thing it's really easy to just be like oh i'm gonna rap like this because i like it you know what i'm saying but to really find who you are you gotta get into it you gotta stumble you gotta fall you know what i'm saying like you gotta just go through it so that's that would definitely be my you know always like not only advice but how i approached hip-hop and being an MC and producer just just going through it and um, and then I think uh, my voice is variation you know what I'm saying because every person has variation in their spirit in their mind and you know what I'm saying so I'm not happy every single day I'm not sad every single day um, I like to snack a bitch's ass one one day I like to be more conservative the next day you know what I mean? So bringing that into the music has always been very important to me and, and just telling stories, you know what I'm saying? So that's really my voice, I would say. And that defines the mark of genius. Mm. What is it? 2,500 hours in one thing, make sure you're genius? But I thought, oh, genius, really? I've never heard of that before. 2,500 hours is make sure you're genius? Yeah, because like you said, repetition. Yes, sir. So 2,500 hours is the beginning of genius. That's dope. Because you've put in enough work to be able to find your mark. Amen. That's the question of hip hop today. Yeah. So many people doing hip hop. What is the mark of genius? Oh man. Uh, the mark of genius, I would say is effortlessness. You know what I'm saying? Like if it, if it, you know, I really like, um, damn, what song was that? There was a Q-Tip song. I believe it was on his his first solo project, and um, he was like chewing something in the beginning, and he was just like, "Niggas be on the mic, <laughs> they be all they they're serious, they're always so serious." And then he said, "Effortless." He that's what he like that always sticks with me is like it's just effortless. So when you do something for so long, it just becomes an effortless thing it becomes a part of you you know what i'm saying where you don't really even got to think about it so um i think that's definitely the beginning and really transition into ultimate genius is just you live and breathe that shit every single day and you don't even really got to think about it like and you and you might be apprehensive about certain things like because like I still get apprehensive about live performance, but when I do it, when I really get into it, it just becomes the air I breathe and like I, I get very excited about that interaction. You know what I'm saying? That's dope, because I want to ask you something about that expression part, because that was very key in right. what you just said. When I think of Chicago, I think about how the jeans lay on top of the, the, the sneakers. Mm. I think about the way the hats cut. Yeah. Then I think about player culture with kangos very mm. kangos and the sweaters very twisted do or die right right what is the, the defining look of a michigan artist honestly there really isn't one i mean that i can think of because again there was so much time when we were really just trying to find our identity because we weren't into that pimping stuff going on in chicago you know what I'm saying? We weren't really into like the Tin Boots and Kang, well not Kangos, um, Wallabies in New York and Staten Island. You know what I'm saying? Um, we weren't, you know, um, we weren't, uh, we didn't have the same type of cars that they, that they had in um, Texas, for instance, or down south. Like there wasn't those pieces of our culture. So I think it's, it's a smorgasbord, man. It's just like, again, when I grew up, 
I tried Timberlands, I tried Lugs, you know what I'm saying? I tried the, the, the pants that were oversized, the three and four X t-shirts, you know what I'm saying? But I, but as always, like I think it's just variation, man. It's just like picking from all those different places and just adding that into the, the fashion, the music, the culture, everything. So those things that you define, Detroit, Michigan, Grand Rapids, Ann Arbor, and all the many other cities, is gumbo. Sure, 100%. It's a, it's a pot that's mixed and you take what you get. 100%. And one like one woman said, when it comes to hip hop, if you want the cookie, you gotta take all the crumbs. Right, right. So when it came to Detroit, right. when it comes to New, New Jersey, when it comes to hip hop, you wanna listen to one, you're kinda gonna have to listen to everything. Sure. Because there's not one defining sound. But what is the most defining moment in Michigan hip hop? Oh man, defining moment? Damn. <clears throat> I think it was, I mean, at least for people in, in my generation, you know what I'm saying, who came up in the 80s and 90s, I think it was the emergence of someone like Eminem, you know what I'm saying, who was, like, because no one was really selling like that, you know what I'm saying, and then when he coupled with Dr. Dre's sound, because mm -hmm. people knew Dr. Dre, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, people didn't necessarily know who someone like Eminem was. And I don't want to disrespect anybody, you know what I'm saying, from, you know, my side of, of the uh, United States, but it just like, I just remember listening to that and I was, I was pleased and I was blown away, blown away at the same time. And I couldn't relate to a lot of the stuff he was saying, you know what I mean? I still think that's an issue with some of the stuff that Eminem does, but um, ultimately, again, him reaching those heights because there were people who, again, were repping for um, Detroit. You know what I'm saying? I, we talked about Dilla briefly before I mentioned him. And again, he was a part of a separate movement though. You know what I'm saying? But again, when you think about someone like Eminem over the last 20 plus years, you know, him being the, the number one selling hip hop artist in history, it's just like, and that was from Michigan. You know what I'm saying? But really, if you look at the Midwest, it, it, it's um, it's like you got Michael Jackson out of the Midwest. You got yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? exactly. You got um, Eminem. You know Royce the Five Nine, Dilla. Like there's so many amazing artists who are legends. You know what I'm saying? Who just who came out of the Midwest, and there still are some legends. But it's just like they're legends in the making. Yeah, I mean, but see that's the thing because that's what made this interview so interesting for me because. When I go back and do my research, Detroit, Michigan, Grand Rapids, Ann Arbor, it's another city that's leaving my head right now that's very pivotal in hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's gonna say Eminem. Everybody's gonna say that. Right. People don't really talk about Frank and Dank mm -hmm. enough. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You surprised? <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> They don't talk about them enough. And Frank and Dank were nasty. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even what's my other man's name? Guilty Simpson. Like, okay. <laughs> I've never even heard of him. Really? Yeah, I've never heard of him. Yeah, him and Black Milk and all of them okay. come together and do tracks. You know what I'm saying? I mean, those are people who really took to the Dilla sound and pushed it. Right. And the Dilla sound is what actually was near the end of the Tribe Called Quest era. 100%. It brought back the, the Buster Rhymes era. Mm. Detroit, the Detroit, I'm not gonna say the Detroit sound, the Detroit influence helped make only built for Cuban Links 2 right. what it was. Right. So there's a lot that's there that's fertile. And hip hop is a fertile ground that grows not only expression, not only grows sound, it also grows the ability to be great beyond public perception. Mm -hmm. What do people think of Michigan that they got wrong that you can show them in your music and in your character? Um, I think it's just like a go-getter mentality, you know what I'm saying? Because the thing about the Midwest is, I mean, really, you pointed it out earlier, Karev, where a lot of it is just, it's just very slow, you know what I'm saying? It's just like people kind of like to chill up there. And I've made the joke in the past that um, Michigan or a lot of places in Michigan, really, it's like... Um, 
it's like a glorified retirement home, you know what I'm saying? Where, you know what I'm saying, like people will go up there to raise a family because like some of the, <laughs> some of the, some of the best schooling, um, golf courses, colleges, uh, soil, you know, art, like all of that shit comes from Michigan. You know what I'm saying? So again, you, you can go up there and you can, you can, get into a, a career in like nursing or just in the medical field and you can live a very, very quality lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's, whether you're making, like you don't even gotta make, you know, $500,000. You know what I'm saying? You can make $100,000 out there and live comfortably. So like the cost of living, all that stuff brings it to it. But again, because of that, it's like people aren't really hustlers like that out there, man. So I had to come out here really to see that and to implement that into, you know, basically my, my own tool belt, my own repertoire, you know?